Right, Project Range Rover Sport um, gearbox. So we bought this car. The gearbox had gone on it. He put a second-hand gearbox in, and then the gearbox wouldn't talk to the car. Now, so basically, the the gearbox is in these vehicles. Now, this is the same for a Discovery Three, Discovery Four, Range Rover Sport, two thousand and five to two thousand and twelve. Basically, the gearbox needs to be coded to the car. Now, I thought it needed to be coded to the gearbox ECU or the transmission control unit, TCU. And I went off a bit on a, on a random tangent because I really don't know what I'm talking about, but don't tell anyone. And will you be careful? There are two things here. There's the transmission, which you or I would call a gearbox, wouldn't we, Dan? And then there's the transfer box, which is all that high and low ratio four-wheel drive stuff. Do not confuse the two. I did. And I I got Dan to take the battery out and rummage in here. And we found the TCU, but that was the transfer case control module, not the transmission control unit. So, actually, believe it or not, the computer that controls the gearbox is actually in the gearbox in the oil which i think is a bit mad and it's a hell of a computer as well and there is a connector on the side of the gearbox and it gets all the signals from the car in terms of whether you're braking whether you're accelerating how fast you're going although it knows that because it's got the, the um the drive output shafts in there so anyway i'm waffling but basically what you've got to do, you've got two options. If you swap a second-hand gearbox into your vehicle, option one is, and we'll do another video, and when we've done it, we'll put it there, is to use a tool like an IID tool that can recode your gearbox to match your car. Now, I haven't done it yet, but the guys at IID at Gap Diagnostics are working with me, and they think it can be done. So I'm not going to say it can be done yet, but we're going to have a go at that. Right. So that's one way. But if you don't want to go and buy an IID tool and you're a cheapskate, which I am generally, then what you need to do is you need to remove the actual computer module out of the gearbox and put it into your replacement gearbox. And I'm going to show you how to do that. Again, I've not done it, but we've sort of worked it out. Now, you want to come and fly the computer here, Dan. But basically... Actually, yeah, I think I can do both. So inside your gearbox, you've got this mechatronics unit, they call it. And this blue part here is the actual um, electronics. And here's the connector plug that comes through the gearbox casing, right? Now, when we strip it down, we should find a bit like this, when that's that blue bit in real life. But if you notice just here, there's some shiny bit here. Now, apparently, when you take that, that whole bit apart, that shiny bit is actually a computer chip that's submerged in a gearbox, and that's the bit you need to swap between. Now, it all looks a bit scary, but we don't reckon it's gonna be too bad. Right, so what we are gonna do in just two minutes is we are gonna get, luckily, we got the original gearbox. So this has got in there somewhere the IC that we need to swap over. But let's just read the fault codes so that people understand what fault codes you might get. So we've got the IID tool plugged in there. We're all ready to go. Let me grab my phone out, pass the phone to Dan. Whoosh, right in Dan, here we go. Let me see if I can log into my own phone. Oh, old people on phones. Here you go, right. Gap diagnostics, here we go. So I always turn that heating off, Dan, there we go. Right then. Okay, search for tool. He always takes a bit longer to power up. Not connected. What am I doing, Dan? Oh, there it goes. There it goes. Right, then. Douche. Right, so let's have a look at faults. And we're looking... Do you remember what it was under, Dan? It was under my... Is it BCU? Body Control Unit or something? I can't remember, to be honest. can't remember, right. So, basically, I think it's a U something or other code is the code that everyone on the internet is talking about. Um, I'll just turn that phone down. Is it? Come on. There you go. Right, right, so auxiliary heater, body control, cell phone, engine, instrument, navigation, braking, suspension, transfer case. I'm not worried about the transfer case. Transmission, okay. 
And this is the code. This is it, U3000. So if you've got the U3000 control module system, internal failure, incorrect component installed. So this is where it can't. So this is what we're talking about. Oh, it's my alarm. I'm bidding on the 20 number plates this morning, but don't tell my wife. Right, okay, let's get on down. Let's snooze that alarm and let's go and have a look at this gearbox. Right then, so we've done a little bit, haven't we, Dan? Yep. Um, and basically, there is a load of these torques. They're torques, aren't they, Dan? Yeah. yeah. Torques heads. Now, some of them are bigger than others, right? So, the ones, we didn't know which ones to take off, so Dan did this quickly last night before we went home. We've worked out that the big ones, and we've coloured them in, so you won't have the luxury of knowing which ones are orange. But basically, take a good look at that. The orange ones, which are the big ones. So once you've got the, the big torques on, you're away, aren't you, Dan? Yeah. There's, there's... They're not quite as rounded, the ones that you need to take out. These ones are more rounded. So there is, you can tell. You can tell. Slightly. So you're going to be lying on your back under your car. Well, whereas this, but this is what you'll be looking at, up at. Uh, but obviously you need to take this out of your old Duff gearbox and put it into your replacement one. Right, and Dan, let's get, have you got the torques there? You, you tidied up after yourself, uh, dude. Right, okay, let's grab. Right, so Dan's going to start on doing those. He's got the torque driver there, just the battery driver to rattle them off a bit quick. Um, I'll put a link here um, to how to remove the sump. So we've done a video. If you're removing your sump on your gearbox that's in the car, you don't need to take the gearbox out to do this. Obviously, you do if you're swapped your gearbox. Um, but some people might just be changing the the mechatronics pack because you can actually buy a mechatronics pack and as you'll see when dan takes it out that's got all your solenoids all your valves and it's i think it's got 90 percent of the things that are going to go wrong on your gearbox in that mechatronics pack um so if you really pushed you could if your gearbox is faulty buy a second hand gearbox and just swap this mechatronics pack over um and I don't reckon you'd be too bad. But if you did that, you'd have to make sure you get the IC, your correct IC, right and Dan. So you reckon that's as quick as that, Dan? Oh, yeah. Well, what's that? I didn't, I didn't work that out. What have you got to push? I can't see what you're pushing. There's a little, that little tab there. Got it. Mm. And it should just... That's it, and it all sort of pops up. And then this should come out. What are you... Now, you, these seals can go on this here. Do you want me to just push it a bit? Go on, I'm pushing then. Uh, you got uh, these. Does he? Come out. Which way did it come out? This, uh, this way. Ah, oh, sorry. Right. There you go. That comes out that way. And sometimes you do need to replace the seals. So if you're doing that, I recommend you need to put new seals on there. Right, so let's have a little model of that, Dan. Spin him over. Let's have a look at the other side. Now, this is starting to look like... Oh, gosh. That's starting to look like the uh, the diagram we looked at on the computer. And this black bit is blue. Now, we haven't taken that out yet, have we? No. But it looks like those screws come through from the other side, doesn't it? Yeah. So, I reckon we need to pick. So, let's go and work out which ones they are and colour those in. Um, and then we can have a look at those down here. So, just... I didn't mention it, so I'll mention it now. Um, so those bolts that we've just taken out are Torx T40, so you'll need a T40, and they're all the bolts are the same, I wasn't watching Dan, I was waffling, apart from these three, and those three go into the black bit, um, you'll, you'll see, but just watch that, all the others though are all the same length, right Dan? Yeah, yeah, all the others are the same length, so don't worry too much, which... Just notice which are your short ones and which are your long ones. Now, Dan's making a start on the other. He's going to work out which ones it is, so we pretend that we know what we're doing. But what size are they, Dan? They are T27. T27. Weird one, right? We'll let Dan work it out and then tell us like he's the master. Can pretend to be the Jedi, can't you? Okay, right. We've worked out what it is. Um, so we've got... So we've coloured them in orange again. So you've got two at the bottom here. So this is upside down. We've got the solenoids at the top. You've got two here. And you've got a second Noah's Ark, is not it? You've got two up there. Okay. And you've got two up there. Now, they're all the same length. So it's a six. Two, two, two. So hopefully that helps you. Um, now, if you take the wrong one out, they're a different length, aren't they? Yeah. Not that we know that because we took the right ones out. Right there. But yeah, it's a bit of a mystery to work out which ones go through to hold the black bit on and which ones actually hold the aluminium plates together. 
So there we go. Right now, I reckon flip that over. Mm. Right now, I reckon if I help press down on here, Dan, yeah. and we haven't, we didn't get this off, but we worked out it was loose. So what? Uh, now obviously you've got pins sort of pushing into your solenoids, so your solenoids get left behind, but there's quite a bit of force where all the electrical connectors, I think. So let's have a look at that, Dan. So I think all these little, they're showing it up like that way a bit so I can see the light, that's it. So all these little pins here, obviously are little blades that go into the solenoids. Um, so let's have a look, right, and, oh look, there's our computer in there, Dan. So underneath these yellow bits here, that's our computer. Um, there's nothing else that exciting. Where's that main connector coming? The main connector connectors in there. in there. That's it. So there's your main connector. So that's the the electronic pack of the mechatronics, and that leaves you your solenoids there. And I guess if you wanted to change your solenoids, this is where you'd be doing that. Is that solenoid come out with it, Dan, or is that one? No, that one didn't have one in. That one didn't have one in. I got a missing dodgy solenoid. I wonder who remembers. Uh, Plug. There's a plug there. Anyway, we haven't got a clue what we're doing, but but that's what you'll find. Um, so Dan's now. What do you reckon? Just should we do that? Go on. Do you reckon they plip out? Plip. That's the new word, huh? Right. What do you reckon? Get a screwdriver in under there. Now there's going to be there's going to be contacts holding up there, Dan, isn't there? That drawing had the pins coming up, so we need to be careful. Just check it doesn't come out the back side. Let's have a look at the back. The back's totally. It's totally sealed and moulded in. So whatever it's doing is coming out top, isn't it? Don't break me. What do you reckon? There's some way that's holding, isn't it? There's something. Oh, 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 that's the way. That moves. All right. Oh, that's that's good, Dan. That's good. So yeah, push from the back there. That's all right. And that's a little plastic cover. Right, goodness me, Dan, right, and get that back in the light again. Let's get over here and show everyone in the light. Right, and so somehow, that's the IC there, and somehow, that needs to pop out. Um, goodness knows how that pops out of there. What do you reckon? We'll so investigate. I, I, I think they're part of I think the whole thing needs to push out. Does can Is there any holes on the back that we can push through, Dan? Can you see any other... Don't drop it on the floor. Yeah, does yeah, that got a little bit of pushiness? Because I reckon all this is moulded in now. And I reckon all the contacts... But it's got to connect to this pack here somehow, hasn't it? Oh, I'm, a myst I'm mystified. Right, let's have a look. Right, we have tried to pretend to look like we know what we're doing and work out how this top cover comes off this. Um, and you've got to take the top cover off because it... The chip is sort of under there. Now you can see we've broken bits of it off. So we've now going to result to the old multi-tool. So turn your volume down. And I reckon, Dan, you want to... Don't go near my chip. So you've got to go right along that back edge, right? You know what you've got to do. But don't come near there like that. you got it. Yeah, right down. Right on that back edge. We'll leave Dan. Leave Dan trashing that. Right, we've decided we've gone completely down the wrong track. So that diagram that we had on the computer, I think that's a little misleading. Basically, what you want to do is, once you've got this separated from your solenoids, I would swap all of this because it's only a circuit board. There's no mechanical parts in this. So just swap that whole bit. Don't try and get this IC out like we were. That's a waste of time. We've got it out here and there's no, we've got that. There's no way that is coming out. So we've led you down the wrong track, but we make the mistake so you don't have to. Ooh, where am I pointing? Right. So there you go. So once you've got that out, now obviously we can't do this now because we've pooped it. Um, but that is what you should do. Swap that black bit over because that's got the computer in it. And there's your computer. Um, you can use that as a little mirror there. Look there. Um, so, so that's how you do it. You swap that over. You put that back onto your solenoid valve block and you put that in your, in your replacement gearbox and you're done. Right, now we'll have a go because we ain't got any choice, Dan. We better hope that IID tool comes up tricks, haven't we? Anyway, good luck with that and all your gearbox fun and hopefully you'll have a smooth change and your life will be better with your new gearbox. Good luck with that.